So I have a ton of, uh, I have a quite a few slides and I'm going to try and run through these as quickly as I can. Starting first with reintroducing all of you to MySQL, you know, the product has been around for some time. It's been there for about 25 years. And for those of you that are not really familiar, there's this company called DatabaseEngines.com, which monitors uh, about 350 databases across the world, ranks them in order of their popularity. They use different uh, parameters. They look at uh, job boards. They look at uh, technical discussions. And they create a list of pe people's uh, database popularity. Now, MySQL has been uh, the most popular open source database on that list, at least for the last five years that I've been here. Uh, in fact, uh, and a couple of years ago, it was also awarded the database uh, of the year, which was an extremely proud moment for us. The reason we are able to kind of maintain this lead is because it's also popular with developers. Uh, if you look at uh, surveys done to uh, measure engagement with the developer community, whether they are from Stack Overflow or JetBrains, MySQL remains to uh, remains a very popular uh, database uh, amongst the entire open source uh, you know uh, crop of databases out there. And uh, all the work that these developers do, it finally results in the fact that there are a lot of innovative organizations out there that are running across, uh, running on MySQL. Uh, MySQL is the database behind Facebook. Facebook, uh, as we know, has 3 billion users, uh, lots, of, uh, lots of queries, uh, lots of interactions with the database. Uh, it's used in uh, social applications like Twitter. It's used in Pinterest. And then on an e-commerce side, it's the main transactional database for booking.com which is booking almost uh, one and a half million room nights a day. So uh, massive, massive, uh, uh, massive scalability, massive use case. Uh, MySQL is also the uh, database behind the uh, e-commerce applications of Netflix and Uber. Uh, so I guess what I'm trying to say is that, you know, uh, ev uh, it's even though very light and very uh, easy to use database, it has been used at scale in uh, applications, in industries across different, uh, uh, different uh, countries. Uh, we, we see a lot of uh, use cases in finance recently because, you know, uh, with the pandemic, one of the things that happened was everything went digital, including currency. A lot of countries are launching digital currency now. A lot of payment processing applications are coming up. Super apps are coming up. And uh, we see old traditional banks pivoting to these new use cases. And we have a bunch of customers in that area that use MySQL. Old school manufacturing companies are also using MySQL to run their IoT applications. And especially in this part of the world, we've seen a lot of use cases deployed by government. We've got a lot of support from government, uh, government to use open source in uh, providing citizen services uh, you know, uh, uh, to, their, uh, to their population. So a bunch of different my, uh, open source applications are running on, uh, running on MySQL. Uh, and the common, uh, common uh, use cases that we've seen uh, are uh, you know, content management, digital payments, authentication systems. And this list has continued to grow. MySQL is one of the fastest growing uh, businesses inside Oracle globally. And uh, we're really overwhelmed by uh, the number of users that use our product. We see almost about 100,000 downloads of MySQL on a daily basis from, my, uh, from MySQL.com. Uh, and what this has really done is it has prompted us to kind of like look back and see how do we provide highly available and secure uh, infrastructure how, uh, and uh, database architecture to our users because they're building mission critical applications, right? So in the past, uh, database HA from MySQL was a very manual process. We didn't really offer a lot of tools and uh, you know uh, for the database uh, engineer to build high available solutions, and there was a lot of customization that the DB had to do. The DB had to think about, uh, you know, user management, configuration, replication, etc., and everything was unique to that particular installation. 
which also makes it very hard to support because then, you know, there are just a small handful number of people who know what's going on inside. Now what we've done is we've come up with something called InnoDB cluster. And InnoDB cluster typically has uh, uh, three, uh, at least three nodes, one primary and two secondaries. And when uh, one, one of the nodes fails, the other one automatically takes over. And HA is natively built into the InnoDB cluster, so all tasks about uh, for high availability are done automatically. You can also have one cluster in one region and then connect it with a, to a second cluster through uh, in, a, in a different region through asynchronous replication. And that basically allows you to provide a disaster recovery scenario so that if an entire region goes down, you can do a manual failover and uh, move to the uh, move to the other region. Uh, there are going to be sorry, suddenly I've become very loud. There are going to be a lot of uh, there are five more sessions around MySQL uh, uh, aspects such as InnoDB cluster later on uh, uh, during these three days, and I would encourage you to attend those uh, sessions by my more technical colleagues who can, you know, dive deeper into uh, into these different technologies. The other thing that the whole world is focused around is on security. Uh, cost of data breaches is very high. Data in front of you is from uh, a study done in the US where every data breach is costing a company somewhere around $10 million. And a high number of companies have experienced a data breach. So it's almost like you start to wonder, is it a question of if or is it a question of when I will have a data breach? Right, so we have to be prepared around that, and then uh, this is a minor plug, uh, 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 you know, into linking back with open source software as well. Uh, Red Hat does an annual survey around uh, the state of open source in the enterprise, and when they first started doing this survey about four years ago, the number one reason why companies uh, CIOs were looking at open source was total cost of ownership. It's going to help me lower my bill. So today that situation has changed where the top two reasons are better security and higher quality software as the two main reasons for that. In fact, 89% of enterprise CIOs surveyed by Red Hat actually believe that open source software is of better quality than proprietary software because people are able to look at the code, the code is auditable. Open source companies have also done a tremendous job of providing uh, bug fixes and patches in a timely manner. And in the last four or five years, the uh, acceptability of open source in the enterprise has, uh, has really increased. Uh, on the same lines, you know, MySQL has uh, another version that we call as the enterprise version. That's, uh, that's our uh, paid version. So we love all MySQL users, whether you're using our free version or our paid version. But uh, the paid version does come with a lot of additional features and functionality, especially around security that is built into the product. And you kind of like don't have to look at other tools to try and make a really secure solution. I've listed down a few of the features. And then there are, I have some, uh, you know, you can find out more about this on the web, but basically all the, uh, key things like transparent data encryption, MySQL audit, firewall, enterprise masking, uh, a single pane of glass to monitor your entire MySQL estate. All that stuff is available through the MySQL Enterprise Edition at a very small nominal cost compared to, uh, compared to uh, commercial editions of uh, other database software. Uh, one other area that we have been focused around is to, you know, maintain our popularity with developers and focused on uh, how to make developers, uh, make, make it easy for, my, uh, for developers to work with MySQL. And, and we've, we've been consistently receiving feedback that, you know, MySQL, you're doing too many, uh, too many updates. You have a lot of new versions coming up, whereas I've got uh, production environments running on MySQL and I can't keep doing updates and patches on a regular basis. So uh, right now our current version is 8.0.31. The next MySQL release that we have will be what we are going to call as a long-term support release. And that product uh, will have, uh, you know, regular bug fixes and patches 
but it will be supported for a minimum number of eight years, three years uh, uh, on extended support and five years on premier support. So uh, if you're running uh, an environment where you, know, you, want, uh, you want complete control, you want complete visibility on and not have to do regular changes and uh, uh, you know, don't have to uh, cope with the update and patch, patch update madness on a regular basis, you can pick the long-term support release as your product. And if you're the kind of customer who wants to look at, you know, the latest and the greatest update and be able to, uh, you know, have the latest innovation, we're also going to have innovation releases. We're going to make it easy to migrate between the LTS release and the innovation release. But you can pick and choose what you want, which world do you want to live in. That, I think, will hopefully give developers the confidence uh, to, you know, continue building uh, their applications on MySQL. Um, and then finally, uh, we also created this marriage between uh, the most popular open source database, which is MySQL, and the most popular development uh, environment, which is Visual Studio. And uh, we put all features of My MySQL shell in Visual Studio Code, so you can get everything that MySQL Shell does to manage and uh, you know configure your database, but with a uh, but with GUI now uh, now that we have uh, MySQL Shell for uh, VS Code. Uh, and then finally, we also added a REST service uh, uh, architecture, so uh, you can talk to your MySQL database through the MySQL router. Uh, it's supported on Open Auth uh, Open Auth two. Uh, provides low-level security, great way to serve up JSON documents. A lot of innovation. Actually, there was, a, you know, there was a MySQL summit back in Redwood Shores just uh, two weeks ago. So we have had so much of innovation. And I really encourage all of you to, you know, come to the different MySQL sessions uh, tomorrow. We also created a, you know, launch an open, uh, launch an operator for Kubernetes. This product is developed by uh, the same team that builds the InnoDB cluster. And it, um, it's currently a level three operator, but it, uh, it, has, it automates all the major tasks of deploying InnoDB cluster in a Kubernetes environment. Uh, our, our hope and our, uh, not our hope, our, our long-term goal is to continue to develop the operator and move it to a level four operator, which will have, you know, provide more insight around uh, uh, alerts, around uh, logs, et cetera. So uh, watch out for this space. And I think uh, one of our other sessions uh, tomorrow is about uh, using uh, the operator in a Kubernetes environment as well. Uh, moving on, uh, all the stuff that I've spoken about is uh, so far is stuff that we have been doing on premise. And uh, if you're following cloud databases, we've, uh, MySQL has had some really great innovation with a product called uh, MySQL uh, Heatwave which has uh, attracted a lot of press attention uh, over the last few, uh, you know, few quarters. So uh, MySQL Heatwave Cloud Service is a service that's available on Oracle Cloud infrastructure. It's a 100% managed service. Uh, so whatever uh, typically a DBA does, we do it for you so that the DBA can you know, focus their attention on the, on the application side of the house and all regular OS patching, network management, uh, etc. is uh, done by the service uh, in an automated manner. The Heatwave Cloud, uh, MySQL Heatwave is uh, what we are calling a single database for OLTP, OLAP, and ML. Uh, now, as as we said earlier in this uh, earlier in this talk, right, uh, and we showed you that uh, MySQL is extremely popular with social applications, e-commerce applications. Now, imagine you have an e-commerce application connected to MySQL Heatwave. Uh, which is, uh, as I mentioned, a single database for OLTP and OLAP. Because of inbuilt machine learning, that the, your customer who's out uh, looking to buy something on your e-commerce application will get uh, recommend, real-time recommendations on other, answer, other products that they can buy. Uh, because, again, it's a single database, you can run analytics without ever having to move data out of your, uh, of your transactional environment Putting it, uh, putting it into uh, you know, a, a single purpose analytics database. So there's no ETL required at all. Uh, Heatwave works with the standard machine learning uh, you know, tools that uh, 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 AI enthusiasts are familiar with. It also works with uh, uh, visualization tools like uh, 
Oracle Analytics Cloud, Tableau, etc. So one single place to do everything. Uh, if if you built your transactional workloads on MySQL, this is a really good uh, uh, good solution for you, and you don't have to think about uh, you know any ETL activity to uh, work on uh, uh, on on uh, My MySQL transactional business anymore. Uh, on, on a high availability standpoint, uh, on the cloud, deploying a HA cluster is very simple. When you open the OCI console and you're trying to provision, you know, creating your DB systems, you just choose the, you know, hey, I want a, a HA cluster, and the system will kind of create uh, those clusters for you. So it's as simple as that. And if you're wondering how does this product compare from a pricing standpoint with everything else that our competitors have, we ran some standard TPCH queries on a benchmark and found that it's way faster than uh, AWS Aurora. And because it's faster does the, and, and is already priced cheaper, uh, customers can uh, actually save, uh, save a bunch of money. So uh, that's with Aurora, and this is with Snowflake, which is you know, a purpose-built uh, analytics database. Uh, we so show a lot of price leadership uh, there as well. Uh, and then, uh, Initially, when we launched with Heatwave, we just had uh, one one particular uh, uh, you know uh, shape available. And now we are announcing more shapes available on the basis of customer demand, adding more uh, adding more capability to improve price performance, adding more data handled per node as well, while, all the while while uh, you know continuing to uh, demonstrate price leadership. Um, now switching gears and talking a little bit about automation that you know uh, and uh, what what are we doing on that front so mysql heatwave has something called mysql uh, autopilot which is uh, machine learning powered automation so when you're starting to you know use mysql heatwave it looks at your uh, it looks at the information that you provided while creating the database system and gives you a recommendation how many nodes you should have what should be the shape of the node it looks at your data and figures out how can it load this data quickly in a parallel way in the memory of, uh, of the heat wave nodes. And once uh, the advisor has finished creating this uh, system for you, it continues to kind of like monitor uh, in, a, in an automated fashion that entire system. If a node fails, it detects that a node has failed. It will automatically provision another node. It will automatically load data onto that other node and um, uh, you know, uh, basically automates most of the regular tasks that you would have to do. Um, and after, after the system is up and running, it continues to monitor it. Uh, it continues to check what have you, uh, you know, provisioned for, what is your actual usage looking like, should you be scaling your system up, should, be, uh, should you be scaling your system down. So all these facilities are already integrated uh, in, uh, in the autopilot. So analysts have been extremely, uh, you know, positive with their praise, uh, praise around MySQL uh, heatwave. Uh, you know, I have some uh, quotes here that uh, from IDC may very well be the single greatest innovation in open source cloud databases in the past 20 years. And I would encourage you folks to go to oracle.com slash MySQL and read some of these, uh, uh, you know, analyst, uh, uh, white paper, so to speak, for yourself. We have a lot of customer testimonials there as well. We have a lot of early adopters for Heatwave. And actually, not just early adopters, now people are putting production workloads on, on Heatwave. And we have quite a few case studies out there, and I would really encourage you guys to go look at those. At FOSS Asia, we have these five sessions where all the things that I spoke about just in one slide, people are going to spend 50 minutes going deep into them and, and, you know, kind of like having a deeper discussion with you uh, on that. So uh, I'm, I'm really hopeful that, uh, you know, uh, you guys show up tomorrow in large numbers to all these different five sessions and talk to more knowledgeable people than me as to what really makes uh, all these technologies work. And then finally, uh, if you haven't done already, go create a trial account for MySQL Heatwave. There's $300 of free credits. Look at it, play around with it ask questions uh, on, uh, on, uh, on community forums, and get started. Thank you.